All right, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're gonna talk about uh, a full audio setup guide for OBS and Twitch, and also how to do some audio syncing and audio splitting within New World and Discord and comms and all that kind of stuff. How to split some audio tracks for DMCA free music and splitting tracks so you don't get DMCA struck if you do play uh, non-royalty free music. And a lot of other little things along the way, some little ticks and trips, some VST plugins and filters and how to do all that stuff on your microphone. Kind of like a full guide on how to break everything down. The video is going to be quite lengthy. So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to put a table of contents down in the video so you can skip around to match whatever uh, part of the video you need to look at. And you can always go back to it on the table of contents and look at something if you've got something. Uh, so let's get into it. So first, we're gonna talk about microphones and what's important for this, uh, what you're gonna need. TLDR on microphones, it doesn't fucking matter what microphone you have, as long as it works. It, this video guide is gonna work for you. This video guide is for single PC streams only. This is not a dual PC stream setup thing. So audio thing setups are different for dual PC. So this is a single PC, uh, but most of the stuff will work. Uh, so microphones, like I said before, it doesn't really matter what you have. As long as it's something decent, it'll work. Uh, obviously, the more money you spend, the better the quality is going to get. But there is a cap on that because of the restrictions that we have in streaming. We're only capped at 160 bit rate for audio output, I believe it is. Yeah, 160 bit rate. So our audio capped is limiting how much actual output we can get. So if you got this crazy setup, you can push whatever, like 500 bit rate to the freaking channel doesn't matter it's capped at 160 <laughs> so uh, there is a limitation within the stream itself that does limit the audio quality to be crystal clear there is going to be some distortion and noise there in the audio channel there's nothing we can do to stop it uh, those restrictions are set across the board between um, streaming and x264 encoding uh, they don't allow any more encoding on the stream as at this point maybe down the road that number will go up uh, but they feel that's a number that's pretty accurate. And for the most part, the audio is pretty solid at 160 hertz or 160 bit rate, sorry. Uh, but that, like I said, it doesn't matter what you buy. If you buy an audio interface, great. You buy something like a Scarlett. Um, Scarlett Solo is a great interface to buy. Uh, I run a, a Mo2 M2. It's about $220, $199 something like that. Gives you a full digital display, which is kind of cool. Gives you two channels, so if you want to play music or guitar, you can sync that other channel into that and use it for that as well, which is kind of neat. Um, if you need that, most guys for recording, you're not going to need the two channels. You just need one for your microphone. You can buy something like the Go XLR. That's $500. Uh, for As for like, interfaces, as for microphones, you can buy anything from a $30 microphone on Amazon, a USB microphone. You can buy... Uh, there's lots of different microphones out there. You can buy the Agato one. That's a cool microphone, the, the Wave 1. That's really good. Uh, you could also buy uh, something like an SM7. Uh, it's a full dynamic microphone. And let's also make this very clear. You want to be buying properly set up microphones that are meant for uh, spoken word and recording in a live, like live interface, live studio, live concert. Um, you don't want stuff that's set up for recording. So let's talk about types of microphones. Types of microphones you want to be looking at are going to be dynamic microphones. You do not want to be looking at large condenser microphones that are not set up for live so for live use. So Elgato's Wave 1 is a large condenser microphone, but it's actually set up for live use. So it doesn't pick up a lot of background noise. Other microphones do pick up a lot of background noise that are large condenser microphones. So you want to tr traditionally stay away from those microphones. I'd be looking, like I said, more towards dynamic microphones, more that are in live concerts. Uh, so like I said, like the Shure SM7, the Shure SM7B is a great microphone. It's a very good large, or very good dynamic microphone, but it does take a lot of extra gear on top of it to make that microphone work. People think they buy the SM7B, buy like a freaking Scarlett Solo and they're good to go. You don't buy a $500 microphone and hook it up to a $99 interface, it's not gonna work. Uh, you need other things along those signal chains to make it work. Uh, the number one thing you will need to make that microphone work correctly with a, something like a Scarlett Solo, you need a Cloud Lifter or Cloud, cloud Lifter 2. 
uh, plugged into that signal chain to make that signal boost up to be clean and clear going into the solo or else you're gonna have a lot of static a lot of background noise and a lot of signal noise on this ch on the chain uh, and the chain what i mean is like the signal of the lines going in you want to have good quality cables going in so you can't buy five dollar cables from amazon expect them to work right um, those little things, gold plating inputs, all the kind of quality of the cables makes a big difference on the signal going in and you want to make sure all that stuff is right. So if you're spending $500, you better be spending another $500 on the interface and everything else to match that, to make that signal sound good. Uh, if you're buying a little bit cheaper stuff, well, the cheaper, the quality goes in, right? So, um, something like a SM, an SM, SM7, it's an S7, SM7 or something like that it's called those uh sure handheld microphones work really well they're made for live uh studio concerts so they're designed to be in a loud environment not pick up a lot of background noises and you put a small pop filter on there and they work great and they're like 55 bucks they're really cheap they're not like highly expensive microphones and they work great and if you want to upgrade from something like that just that's a great interface a scarlet solo a sure sm7 uh those are that's a great setup and you're gonna get a good quality microphone for like under 200 bucks uh, I'm personally using the Rode Podcaster, the Rod, Rode Pod Mic, sorry. And like I said, a Mo2 M2. That's like a $400 setup. So let's move in now into the programs and installation. What programs are you need? Again, all these programs are 100% free. And you need OBS. You need a Twitch account. You need Voice Meter Banana. So you go here, go to the install. I need a uh, virtual audio cable. Go here and install for Windows. And that's all you're gonna need. So install these two programs, restart your computer and come back to the VOD. So now that you got everything installed, we need to set everything up. So first off, let's set it up in Windows, get everything on Windows set up first, then go through actually setting the software up to make it work right and work in OBS. So we're gonna click on the little speaker icon on the bottom right tray. We're gonna go to open sound settings. We're gonna go to the sound control panel. And uh, we're gonna look at playback and recording. We don't need to look at anything else. We're gonna look at these four things or the three things that we installed. So we look at voice meter input. We're gonna look at aux input. We're gonna look at cable input. And we gotta find our headphones. So we need to go through here. We actually need to change the default device to the voice meter input. Uh, leave voice meter aux input alone, cable input alone. Oops, and uh, uh, whatever your your headphones are plugged into. Mine are being called out one two. That's from my uh, Moto M2 interface. That's what my headphones are plugged in. Yours might be a Realtek HyperX if that's what you got plugged into, or something else it might be called. But whatever your headphones are plugged into, whatever the default thing was before, you need to go through and actually set it up correctly. So you go to properties, go to advanced tab. And for all these devices, they need to be set all the same. So you want them at 24 bit, 48,000 Hertz studio quality, exclusive mode. This will be checked by default, uncheck all these boxes. So make these all match the same. And you can see all mine are at 48,000, 48,000, 48,000. And same thing goes for recording. I oh, know, like I said, make sure this is on for default, right? Not comms only. Not something stupid like this, where it's comms and a check mark of this. All of it defaulted to voice meter input. Same, same thing for voice recording. Sorry, just one second. Screwing up my signal chain, so I'm actually causing input lag. But and then same thing for the recording. We need to make sure Mo2 M2. Loop, or mo like my headphones, my speakers, my speakers, <laughs> sorry. My microphone is set the same signal chain wise, right? So 48 bit, cable input. All this stuff is all set the same and exclusive modes all unchecked. So now that's set up. We're good to go. So we got this set right here, right before. That's on default. This is on default for our microphone. This is on default for our headphone, for our, our audio setup. So this is gonna be our new default audio setup for our interface. So all our new games, everything running through is gonna go for voice meter input. 
So now that we got that set up, right, we need to look at setting up some other things along the way. So we need to look at setting up voice meter banana now. So if we actually go into voice meter and look at this, so we're gonna set up uh, a few different things here. So we're gonna look at cable input, which I've named it Chrome. You can name this, this to be a default hardware input one. So just go to the drop down box and click cable input. Actually, we missed a step, I'm sorry. This is a really important step and I fucking missed it. My bad. We actually need to go into here. I'm kind of clicking fast. So we go into sound, go into advanced sound property options here. We actually click this and then the drop down box, you're gonna find your music player or whatever you're using for your music player. I'm using Chrome. Uh, you can click on Spotify. You can click on whatever interface you want to use. And this is the split the audio track for the music. And this is kind of important. I use Google Chrome for my music. I use uh, YouTube and all that stuff to play music and then pretzel rocks over the virtual audio player. So here. So we need to go here in the drop down box and then the device. We want to actually select this to be on uh, Google Chrome all the time. So this is gonna run this through the cable input. So when we go into actual voice meter banana, you're, at first it's not gonna work. So you actually need to make sure you're playing music in Chrome, then it'll pop up here, and then you just click the drop down box, and click it on input, or output, sorry. So once you got that selected and you go to back into voice meter banana, we're gonna see this on the drop down box. So we're gonna click on WDM cable output. And once that's selected, we're gonna click A1 and uncheck all the rest of these boxes. So we want cable output here, and then this is going to be the voice meter in input we've seen here. So voice meter input here. It's going to be on this, this particular tab right here. So I just, I just renamed this game audio. And if you want to rename this, you just right click on this box. It's going to, click here. It's going to give you an option to rename it. You can put your own names there. So I named this game audio. And then this one's on its name comms. So this, we're, this is where we're going to set up our comms here. It's called voice meter aux and, and voice meter vowel, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so this is on A1, A1, A1. This is going to be, this is now going to be your headphone uh, mixer, I call it. So as your headphone mixer, this is controlling everything that's going into your headphones. And this is controlling uh, your headphones now. So instead of before that thing was on your headphones and the recording tab, right? This is gonna be onto game audio. And then this is going into your headphones. So what we're gonna do is actually click this for A1. This is game audio into A1, comms into A1. And we click A1, what do we want? A1, we want that to be on our headphones. So if you have ASIO drivers, you wanna use ASIO drivers. If you don't have ASIO drivers, cause you have just a regular headphones, then you'll be clicking WDM or KS or MME. That you need to go back to the ports and select these, which one you wanna use. So you need to select which one sounds the best. Sometimes you have to click them and it might sound gurgly or poppy. Just keep selecting which one it is and it'll sound best. Once this is set up, it's set up pretty good. You don't have to mess with it anymore. You can kind of just leave it all at zero dB, all on default. You don't need to mess with anything else. So once that's set up and you got music actually coming into your headphones now, you got things working. And like I said, everything's on A1. A1 is a channel, a physical channel, which is up here like we selected before. Uh, that's gonna give you everything kind of working. You need to go into the menu tab, click system tray and check on the run at startup. These two, these two new things need to be checked. Once they're set up and working, you don't need to scan through anymore. Just click X, close it, don't worry about it. Everything should be working now. You shouldn't hear any kind of difference in quality. Everything should be working normally and it should be good to go. So let's get into the next step. Next step is gonna be setting up. Now we got voice meter banana set up. We actually need to set up OBS. But before we set up OBS, let's actually talk about setting up some comms and set up, setting up Discord. So pretty easy for Discord. Go to voice and uh, video, go to audio output device and select voice meter aux output. That's it, that's all you do. Because we selected it right here, right? In voice meter banana, comms, voice meter aux, one. That's all it does. Now it comes in through default for your microphone. You can leave it on default. I'll put, you can put an aux output and that's going to be into your headphones. So everything's set up now for that. And we're going to hear comms like we normally did on Discord. Nothing's going to be delayed or screwed up. 
there's no major delay systems with with all this kind of stuff you, if you have a generally working computer everything's gonna be perfectly fine so let's get into obs and the meat of it right the the big part of setting this up is actually splitting uh, multiple mixtures to control multiple flows of channels to make this kind of work and we actually need to go into a little bit of depth here in obs uh, to set this up correctly and make this work and, and after we're setting up obs we'll actually go into a uh, new world and show what we can do in new world with some cool tech that they've been that they've uh, added into new world and making it hopefully a standard in games going forward uh, so first let's get into obs so stream stream setup that's all pretty standard I'm not going to go into setting up streams. Uh, what I'm going to do is go into output and then streaming need, and something you need to look at here. So we look at uh, audio track and audio track box one, number one, track one, whatever you want to call it, needs to be checked. So I can't uncheck this right now because I'm actually doing a recording. So this is all grayed out. But audio track one will be the, will be the main track that we're looking at. So if we kind of look at audio track and we think about what it is, uh, I can kind of explain what it is. And you can kind of use that as a, as a guideline moving forward. Audio track one is going to be a live track, right? This is going to be your live recording, live track. So onto Twitch, it's a live track. Onto YouTube, it's a live and recording track. Onto Facebook, um, Trovo, Brime, whatever other interface that does live streaming, track one is the only track that's available. Something that Twitch does that nobody else does because they're good at doing stuff like this with audio syncing because of they designed their own thing called, uh, I think it was called SoundCloud or Soundtrack or something like that. They added a separate track that removes from the VOD, which is track one. Track one is like I said, a live streaming audio track. What they did was they added a second track that will actually record to the live stream and to the VOD. So what goes on the VOD and clips is track two or whatever track you select. So OBS integrated this option into the program and allows this. Again, this is, I don't know if this is for slobs, but definitely for OBS Studio is something you should be on. I would not recommend any other software than OBS Studio. People can use slobs. I don't know the details of slobs. I don't use slobs. So I can't get into the detail on how to work that program. Maybe this option is there now. Usually slobs is quite a few versions behind on the fork of what OBS studio is at. So maybe it is there, maybe it's not, but if it is there, great. If it's not, then it's not going to work for you. You have to come to the studio, but for OBS studio, you should see this thing called Twitch VOD track on a little box. You can check, check this box. And by default, it's going to be on number two track. So th think of what this is. Think of this as your main live stream track right here. And this is your VODs and clips track. All right. So in channel two is VODs and clips. Channel one is live stream. All right. We got that understood. We got, we know what that's about. We're good to go move on to the next tab. Audio sample, audio sample rate is going to be 24 kilohertz or 24 or sorry, 24, 48 kilohertz or 48,000 Hertz. It's what we set up on the windows. This all matches and syncs together. This is to keep our audio kind of connected and not causing glitches and, and, garbly sounds and weird things going on when audio gets to different frequencies back and forth between people, different programs using different audio sample rates that kind of causes a stumble on things. You can click channels and leave it on channels on studio on stereo. That's fine. Uh, you see something different between mine and probably yours. My desktop audio is disabled. You're wondering eh, what's going on there. Well, we're going to explain this and it's done for a reason. The only thing I want on global audio devices is my main microphone and that's it. I do not want any other audio being on the global audio devices and global audio devices will show up here every single time, no matter how many scenes you switch from global is global. It means permanently always on. The only thing that needs to be permanently always on is my microphone. The rest of it I can control through switching scenes and switching sources. So if I want to turn something off or not add that to a certain scene, I have the freedom to do that by doing it this way. So I think this is the best way of doing your audio mixes on live streams and in recordings in OBS. It gives you a lot more freedom and a lot more availability to do things. So we have video tab. This is pretty standard. Hotkeys, you can set up a map and hotkeys and microphones. So I got a mute button. I put it on scroll lock. 
the uh, scroll lock has a light on it. It gives me a little like indicator. If you have a stream deck or something, you can map those keys there. You can do a push to talk or push to mute. So if you want to sneeze, you can push and hold a button down and, and mute that button. Uh, that's just something you can do there. You can add multiples if you want, just click, clicking the plus button. You can have 5,000 keys that are mapped up. Push to mute or push to talk. Uh, advanced tab, everything's kind of just default. So we've gone through the basic settings of this. Now let's actually talk about setting up the audio itself. So we're gonna go through and actually delete all these channels. And we're gonna get to just the microphone. And this is what it's gonna look for you if you haven't set it up this way. So we're, if you set up the way I just showed you in the video, what you're gonna have is microphone. You'll be like, oh, well, that's not very good. I don't have the rest of my signals. What do I do? Well, you go right down here and you go to add, add audio output capture. Great, right? And we're gonna see, we've already added some stuff here. So if we were to add my Chrome and music, which is what I set up, and you had a box show up, you'd have this show up in your drop down devices. So the drop down devices that we selected for Chrome and music, or whatever you're setting it up for music. This is particularly going to be used for music. Uh, I would pick the cable cable output or cable input. Cable input. So that's going to give me my music. Now, oh, my game, right? So I selected this call. I renamed it game. And it's going to be on voice meter input. So that's going to give me my game audio. I need comms. Right, so if I want to capture comms, I need to add it here. So I also comms again. We set it up. We set it up in Discord. We know comms is a voice meter aux input. So this is to be comms. And we named it comms. We named the other one game. We named this one by default microphone, and this one's Chrome and music. So I know this is going to be Chrome and slash music. It's where I play my music. So I know this is what it's being used for. I know this is my comms. I can quickly look at this uh, freely. I can see my levels all going up. I know what's going on here. You can, if you want, you can click docs, view, docs, unlock, move this around, put it wherever you want. There's freedoms to do how you want it. You can set it up how you need to. If that's something you want, you want it bigger, right? Depending on your stream setup, the freedom is there for you and the thing that's great about uh, OBS Studio is they allow you to do those docs. Once you get everything set up, I would recommend locking the docs so you can't drag it out of there and move it away around. I have it down at the bottom, just it's easy for me to look at uh, on my monitor. I can see what's going on. I can see if my microphone's clipping or not. I can tell my levels are good. I know, I know what's going on. So once we got that kind of all set up, we know what's going on. We have us kind of basically set up now. We understand that we need to actually go and actually configure these things correctly to actually work within the stream and make sure we don't have ourselves getting struck with the MCA. So one first, if you do have an interface like a Scarlet Solo, a Mo2 M2, or some other interface that has multiple XLR inputs on the same channel, what it's going to do is going to be on a stereo channel. And if you plugged in your microphone, you might only hear yourself on the left or right side after doing a recording. What needs to be done on an interface like this, you need to go and select mono on the microphone. This will push the track to left and right. You can see right here, left and right channels are both equalized. If I uncheck this box, you're gonna now hear myself on the left channel, I think. Maybe it's not working, I don't know. It used to be, maybe it's working correctly now. I don't know, maybe uh, OBS did a fix. Anyways, you just have to click mono. Maybe it's working, maybe it's not, I don't know. Not important, but generally, if you're having uh, level issues and you're only seeing your signal coming on the left side, just click the mono and it'll work. Next, we need to actually set up the tracks. As we remember from before, we talked about setting it up in the setups. We know track one is for live stream, track two is for VODs and clips. So we're listening to the music, okay? We can listen to all the music we want on the live stream. We do not want this on the VODs. If we're listening to non-royalty-free music, 
So for listening to friggin' the top hip hop song of the month, and we're listening to whatever the song is, and it has 10 billion plays, and it's gonna cause us a DMC strike or DMCA strike, sorry. That might not want to be on a clip, right? You may not want to clip that and how are people allowing you to clip that because if it's on a clip, it's going to mute the VOD, one. You don't want mutes on your VODs, it's bad. Two, people can scrub, scrub the Twitch, the Twitch, can scrub Twitch and look for uh, copyright music with their programs. And even if you delete the VOD, the clips and the highlight reels and the VODs themselves are actually there forever because Twitch holds on to these VODs in the back end to make sure for safety protocols that if they do get banned or they do a ban, they can go back and recall that information even if you deleted the VOD. So if you delete the signal at the source, it's never recorded to the VOD initially. So if it's never recorded to the VOD initially, it doesn't matter what you listen to live. It's not on the VOD. They can't scrub the VOD and DMC strike you. So that's why you might see people like Timac or other live streamers or XQC or whoever you're thinking that's a big, big streamer listening to the top 40 hits and not getting struck because they're not scrubbing the live streams. They're scrubbing the VODs. So if you clicked here, you can listen to all the music you want and never get struck again. Boom. Easy. Done. Thumbs up, right? Cool. Okay, let's talk about comms. Now this works. Well, great. But this little trick I didn't tell you about. If you look at this and how this works, if I click this, what's going to happen? If this is on the live stream and on the live recording. If I click this, does it turn off? Does it turn on? Do I have to restart the stream to make this work? Do I have to reboot OBS to reset all, all these configurations? No. If I click this off, the music ends. But does it? It doesn't end. Right? You could technically mute it here. And that kills the signal as well. But why would you do that? You want to listen to it on the VOD. But hey, maybe... You're, like I said, on the comms part of it, right? You want to be having comms on or off when you want. You don't have to go through and mute this here. You can do that because it's on its own separate track. But you can actually go and say, like, okay, I don't want comms on the VODs, right? But it's okay for it to be on the live stream. Why not? Like, if someone says a gamer word live... And someone tries to clip it out of context, get me banned. If the comms aren't on too, it's never on the VOD. It's never on the clips, right? So if someone slips and says a gamer word, if you slip on the same gamer word, eh, you're probably going to get banned from TOS. If someone's going to clip it out of context, uh, if, especially if you're doing it too much, they're going to live record you and, and send it in in a report. So don't do that. But if someone slips in a Discord call and does it, oops, right? And you tell them, hey, don't do that. And you don't have to stop the stream now and re and delete the VOD. The dot, the VOD, the now we know also the VOD is never actually deleted, so they can go back there and still ban you for that. And you're not going to get clipped out of context and someone's going to try and mass report you for some bullshit because it was never recorded in the VOD and the clip in the first place. So if you have comms on live, live streams, right, you can have this on all the time. Now, if you're on like New World, for example, and you're doing some sort of live stream PVP event and, you're, and your guild master says don't stream comms, click, boom, no comms, right? Comms is off now. You can disable comms so you don't have uh, people stream sniping you and getting your information. Uh, that's an easy click, easy removal. You can, like I said, also click down here and mute them there if you want. It's a quick way. Uh, but this is a way that for you to control, like I said, VOD, clips, and live stream and kind of break that up. And also what you can do, you also see I might have some other boxes checked in here, which is really important uh, for recordings and for um, YouTube videos and editing and, and that kind of stuff. 
So if you're into editing and making like highlight reels and videos and using OBS to actually stream and record live stream and do videos like this, what you can do is actually take this software now into something like DaVinci Resolve, which is 100% free, which is a very powerful editing software. Click say like I have microphone on track three, I have game on track four, I have Chrome and music on track five, and I have comms on track six. So now when I go into DaVinci Resolve and load up this video, I'm gonna see multiple tracks below the video. And I'll be able to click these individually and mute them out, edit them, make cuts to them individually, or cut out pieces of the video or of the of the VOD or the music music or audio samples that maybe to have gamer words that would get me banned on YouTube without clipping out the music and making those audio points and the game audio be out of sync because the game audio is on its own file. So I can keep the game audio and the video like feed in sync and then clip out pieces of my microphone that I don't like, or like I said, of the music or of the comms or cut the music all, all together. If I was listening to DMCA, uh, non DMCA free music, I can cut that out and replace it with something else. So it gives you a lot more freedom in editing to do a lot of stuff here if you understand how tracks work. So that's how I have tracks set up and that's why it's set up the way it is. So microphone three, four, five, and six are all set up for splitting audio and editing software. Track one is for live streams. Track two is for VODs and clips. So that gives you a basic understanding now of how to do this stuff. Let's actually go into New World and actually look at what New World is doing that makes it so different and so much better uh, for audio people and streamers. And what they're doing is actually groundbreaking and next gen on the audio side of things. And it's pretty awesome because Twitch owns Amazon or Amazon owns Twitch, whatever they 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 work together. Uh, obviously, Amazon owns Twitch, and Amazon owns uh, obviously Amazon Game Studio. So they understand the importance of content creators. They they understand the importance of um, making videos, creating content uh, for YouTube, for Twitch, for other platforms to help push the game into the next realm of uh, sales, that, that content creators are a huge part of that sales. Uh, they don't need to do as much mass marketing as they used to before. They can just do word of mouth through YouTube now and make a ton of sales, probably make the majority of their sales off to people that are doing YouTube videos and live streams. I can't imagine advertising on the side of buses like Cyberpunk did or making TV videos or TV ads actually makes them money anymore. Everybody has a phone, right? So let's be realistic here. So what we can do is actually go into settings in New World. There's a little tab called communication. Let's quickly look at this. There's something really unique here. So audio, it's its own tab. It's controlled all the game audio. This is what you normally see in most games. It's an audio tab. Okay, cool, all right? You can click your headphones, you can move all these sliders around. It's a different tab though in, in New World. And I think this tab needs to be a standard. I think New World is creating that new standard. It's pretty important. There's two things, there's two tabs that are important here. Twitch integration, okay? More game developers need to start doing this. This is important. Not just Twitch integration, but just live streaming integration. So YouTube or something to support live streams. Twitch is obviously going to be integrated in Amazon because they own it. <laughs> so why not? And communications tab. A separate tab for communications. If you have in-game VoIP, this should be standardized as the new standard. So you have chat mode, right? You can enable it and say, boy, you have speaker output. This is huge. This is super important for live streamers and, and YouTube content creators. You can now split the audio track. I, I can't explain to you how important this is as a live streamer. You can now listen to all your comms in your headphones. If you do your stream an OBS setup like this, you can sync voice meter aux output to comms. And you can put this on the live stream. You can put this in your headphones, not on the recording, not on the VOD, or remove it from the live stream. 
if you're streaming something like on YouTube, you can disable comms. Now, if someone runs into your stream and tries to stream snipe you, they think they're getting away calling whatever TOS words or whatever they're doing to try and get you banned or people are coming in and don't know that you're streaming and they say gamer words and you have to go and delete the VOD, stop the stream, delete the VOD, restart the stream to protect yourself because you're doing your due diligence to make sure it doesn't happen. You don't have to do this anymore with this game. And hopefully the game's going forward, you won't have to do this anymore. You click this into voice meter aux input, you put the comms into your headphones, you disable the comms from going on the live stream, and you're done. You can listen to all the comms, all the gamer awards, people talking like trash, you can react to them how you want, as long as you don't say gamer awards back because you're gonna get TOS and then banned. But realistically, you can listen to all the comms and listen to everything that's going on with it, and if you want to uh, record it, you can go ahead and then use it as a clips later on, or you can decide what you want to do with that audio later on and, and edit. Or like I said, or you can put it on the live stream and not in the VODs. But those freedoms are there for you to do that and not have to worry about someone saying something and you getting clipped out of context because if you don't put it on the VOD and don't put it on channel two, it's not going to go in the clips. So if someone can say something and they can't clip it out of context and try and get you banned or report you for somebody on your stream saying something bad that you have no control over that removes all that TOS bullshit by having this in here, which is huge, right? So that's a massive step in the right directions for supporting content creators. And they know the importance of it and having this kind of syncing in there. It also gives you an option to select your microphone, which is cool. So if you want to use a different microphone for the in-game, you can do that. So this is good for dual PC streams too. So let's go back as we got understanding that we got understanding of audio, audio splitting, mixing, and a headphone mixer and a stream mixer. This is your stream mix. This is your audio mix for your headphones, which is voice meter banana. Uh, we got everything kind of synced up. We know it'll work. And because we removed exclusivity mode on all the options in the program file in the, in the soundboard, the sound panel, sorry. We know that uh, Windows through an update isn't going to fuck our shit up anymore. So we set it and forget it. We're good to go. So let's talk about actually making the microphone sound half what decent. I personally don't speak very well into the microphone. My voice personally, I don't think is very good, but that's near or here or there. Um, what we can do is try and make improvements to it. And what I've got is a video which I will link in the description which I found searching the internet it's got a hundred thousand video views you can go and watch the video I took some of my ideas from this and pieced my own ideas for it so in this video he talks about this particular source of plugins these plugins are what are called VST plugins they're all 100% free and that's what he uses to, to make his audio sound a certain way I don't start to particularly like the way his audio sounds, but he does give some good tips and pointers and I'm too lazy to remake the video and I don't want to do it. <laughs> so what I've done is a little bit different than what he does in his video. And I'll talk about why I do the things I do in my single chain and how I actually got here. Cause I skipped that part. So you can click the little cog wheel on microphone and click the filters. So audio filters are going to help you look kind of like do what they are filters. <laughs> They're gonna help you cut out noise, background noise. They're gonna help you sync things up, make uh, EQing on your voice, uh, remove plosives, remove S sounds, uh, syllabants, syllabants, syllabants. Um, again, like I said, like remove background sounds and help kind of balance your audio to make sure it's not uh, too loud or too quiet and it kind of stays within the, the, the peak point of recording right as you're a live streamer you want to be in that top frontal point of the recording at all time and making sure that you're the number one thing on this on the front of the stream not you or your friends your friends aren't overpowering you you're not um underpowered from the game or something like that right so we're gonna get into the plugins and the signal chain kind of important um so we'll just kind of like break it down on mine, what I've got is something called an expander. Uh, you might have heard of it or something similar to it, which is called a noise gate. 
most people use a noise gate expander in my opinion is a much softer more chilled out version of noise gate noise gates like your crazy jacked up brother that's always on steroids and expanders like your chilled out little brother that just wants to play video games or something i don't know just trying to make up a conference but expanders more chill more relaxed it's not as aggressive on, on doing the job it's a lazy noise gate basically and that's truly what you're looking for as a live streamer you've probably heard a lot of live streams in the past that are like hard cuts and in and outs and the voices are always cutting off hard after they speak and a lot of their words are being cut off one is because they set the noise gate up completely incorrectly two they should be using a noise gate to start off with <laughs> their rooms probably aren't really that noisy or their microphone is actually really noisy and they're trying to remove signal noise which is something you can't do anyway so you're never going to fix that and they're trying to fix the signal noise with a noise gate and you don't do that if you have signal noise you need to use a suppressor which is right here noise suppression so if you have a signal noise on your signal change you actually just need to remove it by using this which we don't need that it actually would cause my audio to be bad so number one on my signal chain how i work the signal chain is i work it from top to bottom that's how the signal chain works so expander is the number one thing on the very top it's the kind of like the most important thing and how it works and then it kind of works as layers on top of that right so expander is the first thing to come in so when i stop talking i want the signal to drop and keep dropping you're going to see that black line on the microphone right here that's the, the expander working and doing its job you can see it as i talk it's cutting off and dropping and as i talk it's going to cut down it's going to pull the audio down but if you kind of see the audio, it slowly drops. It doesn't just hard cut. So it, like I can say certain words and as I take a breath, the, the words don't get cut off. And it's kind of like how the, the expander is set up. So I've got it on a pretty chill ratio, it's a two to one. The more you push this ratio up, the more aggressive it's going to be. And I can kind of show that here. See how fast it drops. It's like bang, bang. It's like slamming really hard. Where before a two to one, two to one, it's like kind of just slides down a little bit easier. The threshold for me, it's at 40 minus 40 dB. That's just on particularly on you, your microphone positions and setup on your next to your keyboard, how close it is to your keyboard, if it's on your desk or not, how noisy your background noises are, how noisy your room is. You have fans and AC running. You're going to have to like just the best way to set up the threshold is to be quiet in your room. I'll turn it off. So you can see I'm moving my mouse around, banging things, and that thing keeps jumping up. So if I put it for me, like I said, I have it at 40. So I move my mouse around, hit my keyboard. For the most part, the noise is gone. And it kind of like, it'll keep pulling the noise down and closing it, closing it as it goes on. Gain output, rest of it, default, default. Gain output, leave it at zero, you don't need it. So in the other video, he talks about using Slick EQ, Nova, TDL Nova, and some compressors and other things. I don't use those other things. I only use Slick EQ and the Nova one. Uh, you can use a lot of the things and use make his, your voice sound like his if you want. It's all personal preference. I think uh, using some form of like slick EQ is kind of important. And I'll kind of explain how to do that. So when you go to plugins, you're going to click on here. You're going to see VST 2.0 plugin. You want to add that and you have a drop down box that'll show up. If you install these like you did in the video, uh, you have the plugins, the TDLR plugins installed here. So you're going to click slick EQ. And I bricked it. So this is my particular setup for my plugin. This is all again, personal preference on your particular voice, your microphone setup, your room setup. You need to tweak this, listen to the recording, tweak it, listen to the recording, tweak it, listen to the recording until you get it where you're happy with it. The Calibric on his is different than mine. I got my settings different than his, so on and so forth. High pass filter, this is pretty standard across the board. 50 Hertz on the high pass. 
there's no reason to have noise coming up below that in my recommendation that's gonna be banging and bumping on the desk random vibrations it's gonna be not in your voice it's gonna cause distractions and noises you don't need it again this is my personal setting my personal preference and understanding of my voice and what i think it sounds best maybe it sounds like shit to others this is just me being a critic of my own voice and what i thought it sounded the best at uh, you can set it up like this you can work it as a baseline you can set it up as his and mess with it i got low frequency boosting it a little bit to try and give me a little more bass in my voice at 400 hertz i'm cutting some of the those noises down to try and like clean up my voice so it's a little bit easier to understand and more on my sibilant sides i've kind of bumped them up a little bit to like sharpen up my sounds a little bit so that's pretty standard just calibration and gain output i pushed it up a little bit just to kind of give me a little bit of a boost on those signals and then Nova, and his thing on Nova is pretty accurate, and I do the same thing as well. I've got some passives going on here. So on channel one, if you watch his video, he's talking about for uh, plosives and P's and pops. So I'll go pop, 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 pop. You can kind of see it live coming in here. And then as it gets to the point of zero, it's going to like want to peak the microphone. So what it's going to do is going to drop it down so it doesn't become really harsh in your ears. Now, if I was to say something like S's, so like a sea of seashells, that's going to be a lot of sibilance. And that's going to try and remove those sibilance from those. So if, as I say, uh, like I said, C, it's going to try and cut those down. And that's a more aggressive uh, setting. And I'll click on that setting. You can kind of look at it and use it as a baseline or, one, or like use his. And there's some other settings up here that he talks about. I kind of just copied his for what they were. So that's... Uh, TDLR Nova, Nova the, the program that's used, like I said, um, more for an EQing your things out of your voice that you don't like, not for boosting. And then I use a compressor and that's it. I use the default compressor in OBS. You might want to use a third party compressor. That's up to you. Um, this is just my personal settings of my compressor. I got on six to one, my thresholds, thresholds on 12 minus 12. Again, this is all personal preference based on what your signal chain is, how loud your microphone is coming in. Uh, I clipping it down after 12 and pushing the signal down. By doing that, I'm losing a lot of the volume, but keeping the whole uh, audio, this what a compressor does is kind of balances the audio and not allow it to be too loud or too quiet. It's trying to make sure that the mix is always at the same volume. So if you're talking three inches from the microphone at the normal volume you always talk to, you get a little bit louder, a little bit quieter, but you're not moving away from your mic or moving into the mic too much. It's going to try and keep those volumes kind of even out throughout the whole track. Um, because I'm clipping down 12 dB, I boosted it back up and there are 10. So it kind of keeps it balanced around that minus six which is kind of like a good balance. You want to be close to zero without clipping, but you don't want to clip. So give yourself a little bit of headroom. Minus six to minus 10. Somewhere around there is pretty good. So if you get too loud, it can kind of balance it. Uh, you can add a limiter. Try and keep your volumes down. I don't use limiter. I think there's something wrong with the OBS limiter, to be honest. So I don't use it. Uh, obviously having limiters to help you from not peaking and causing clipping into your track. Uh, obviously when you clip, you push past zero, you're going to get distortion and noise. That's not legible. So try not to do it. If you speak kind of on average normal, you're not going to generally have that. So I'd recommend just kind of like the baseline of things. And I think overall, that's pretty much it. I don't know what else to cover. I think that's about 49 minutes in the video. Pretty long video. I think I got a, gone through everything I could think of looking at my notes here. I think that's pretty standard. Uh, if I miss something or you need help with something, slow, throw a comment in the video and I'll try and get back to you. And if it's worthy of another video, I'll make another video of updating something that I missed. But for the most part, I think that's pretty much it. You go through advanced audio properties you understand how to do track one and two um we understand what voice meter is for now uh, what i use it for is like i said a headphone mixer and this allows us to 
do some crazy stuff. If you're into dual streaming, uh, you, you want to get into dual stream PCs, you can look up V banning. Uh, that's something you can do in a uh, voice meter and sending the audio signal back from over the internet from one computer to another. It works pretty good. There's a bunch of other crazy settings in OBS and uh, voice meter banana that really aren't useful. You can do some tweaking and like, uh, change how things sound if you want to. But uh, I wouldn't recommend messing with it too much. So there's modulation, position, voice. So you can do some crazy shit there, but for the most part, you don't need to be messing with that. It's just for audio purposes and like levels and stuff and allowing you to hear what's going on and break the signal tracks up, right? So doing this, if you didn't do this, you'd have to like uh, do some crazy shit. And you could technically do everything with out voice meter. If you didn't want to run it, you could go into, you could go into sound control. And I think you could go into, I think it's listen and put it into like your headphones that way. But overall, you don't really need to be doing that. Just use voice meter banana. It should work pretty good. I think that's it. If you like the video, cool. Give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe for more videos, I don't make a lot. Just whenever I get inspired to do something that I think is worthy of kind of sharing it with the community, I'll make a video and share it. Otherwise, I just kind of just chill out. I'm pretty much done being a live streamer for the most part. I used to do it back in the day and do a lot of crazy shit and spend a lot of time doing it. <sighs> it's tiring, dude. I just, just want to play games and make videos when I want to that, are, that I think are helpful for people. Yeah, uh, till next time. Thanks.